for the cheapest, fastest, most reliable muck coins in the market, check out my coin sponsors at AOEAH.com and use discount code MONEY for 3% off. Link in the description below. Welcome back, Money Team. This is Mad Money Shots. Never the man cheese as always. Got a quick gameplay video for you guys today. Today I'm be going over my top 15 tips and tricks for offense and defense. Whether you know about these things or not, these are things you need to do more often. I would say the majority of these things are things you need to do in every single play and every single game to be more successful and win more games in Madden 22. As always, if you guys want to see more videos like this, hit the like button. Let me know in the comment section. Other than that, let's go let's get right into the video. Now, my first tip would be to run schemes, not plays. Whether you're on offense or defense, it's super important to make sure that you set your auto plays in every offensive or defensive formation that you're going to run. You have a total of four possible options when it comes to your offensive and defensive audibles. Make sure you fill them all up and make sure you have a nice blend of run plays and pass plays on offense and different coverages on defense. If you come to the line of scrimmage and you see an opportunity based off what your opponent's defense is running, but you didn't set the audible plays correctly to take advantage of that opportunity, it's going to do you no good. My next tip is to set your substitutions. Make sure you always have the best player in the best position to make plays. On this next play, I fully intend to use one of my favorite plays, the PA fork here, and try to hit a one play touchdown. But this play will not work if I don't have my fastest receiver in the right spot. So basically, Randy Moss here, all I'm doing with him is pulling back the coverage. The only way this play is going to work is if I have my fastest receiver running the route that I plan on throwing to, which is Tyree Kill. Break yourself, fool! Even he almost wasn't fast enough to get past Calvin Johnson. That was a close one. If I wouldn't have had the right receiver in the right position, I probably would end up throwing an interception rather than a one-play touchdown. Next up on defense, never pick a play first. Always wait to see what your opponent's personnel grouping is going to be before picking a play. They even go as far as to tell you the name of the formation. This is just going to make it that much easier for you to know what type of defense to pick. You always want to match personnel as well. If in the three wide receiver set, typically you're going to come out in something with three cornerbacks. But on this particular play, I come out in a 3-4 because I know that I can cover three receiver sets typically with this particular formation. And ultimately, I want to use my base defense on the very first play. You can see here, nope. he runs with his quarterback and read option on the very first play, which is something I have to make note of and ultimately change up on the next play when I go back to my formation and see he's going to run three wide receiver once again. Now, I still set one of my audibles before I switch over to this formation, but ultimately, my next tip is to match speed. Fight fire with fire. If he's going to be coming out with Lamar Jackson and running on the very first play, it leads me to believe that he's probably going to be running with his quarterback quite a bit so i gotta have a lot of speed out there so i'm gonna come out in a db fire two blitz send a lot of pressure send a lot of fast cornerbacks onto the field so that if he does run around with his quarterback i have a much better opportunity of trying to stop that that's why you always need to make sure that you're matching personnel and the next play comes out a three tight end set i would be a fool to come out if i keep picking my db fire two if i keep picking my smaller defensive packages like the dollar i'm gonna get run over as you can see on the next play <laughs> Because I waited and I matched personnel, I shut the next play down. But you always want to make sure that you never pick your defensive play first. Always give your opponent the opportunity to do that first, unless you have a defense that works against just about everything, which is basically what I'm running now. Next up, always play the ball when it's in the air. I've heard people say that sometimes it's best to swat the ball down and stuff like that. I never do that. I always go for interceptions because you can see stuff like this will happen. On the next play, you can see that my opponent here throws it and, and it's in a position where if he would have caught it, he probably would have at least made a catch and run for the first down but turnovers are the most important thing when it comes to playing defense in this game so i'm always going to go for the turnover first on the next play you can see it happens once again and i'm going for that ball i don't get it you can see if you go for the ball and you play the ball properly you play the ball to the point where it should be an interception the worst case scenario is typically that the ball will get knocked out and be incomplete to nobody so always contest the ball by trying to catch the ball that to me is the best way to go my next tip is all about pre-snap leverage. You want to make sure that you always take away leverage, whether it's in zone coverage, man coverage, uh, run fits. As you can see right here, I didn't have enough time to move my safety over, and that basically just let this tight end get open right over the middle, <gasps> which never would have happened if I would have adjusted pre-snap and taken away that quick throwing lane. My next tip is to make sure you always change tempo and coverages. You don't want to get predictable. Uh, you don't want to run the same defensive coverage too often because your opponent might start figuring out, and you don't want to play soft too often. You don't want to play too aggressive too often. You want to have a nice mix so that your opponent never really knows what opportunities they had. Anything you do to become predictable is going to make you that much easier to beat on defense. Watch out, watch out, watch out, watch out, watch out, watch out. 
Some plays you're going to want to play soft. You want to play more of a zone style defense. Some plays you're just going to blitz uh, the house, which you can see I did right there. But ultimately, you want to always change it up so that your opponent's always guessing what you're going to do next. But you also want to uniform your plays so that they always look the same. This play here, I've done this a couple different times. Sometimes I've dropped my linebackers back. Sometimes I've dropped them in the flats. Sometimes I blitz them. But you want to always make sure that your defensive looks always look the same so that your opponent doesn't necessarily know what's coming next. Next up, you want to identify and adjust your defense based off what your opponent is doing. A lot of people have tendencies to the point where they basically try to do the same things over and over, whether they like to run with their quarterback a lot, whether they like to just run the football a lot through big sets, whether they like to throw over the middle to their tight end a lot, which my opponent did here on the majority of this drive. Once you identify what your opponent likes to do, uh, you basically just have to adjust to it. So on the next drive, I will get back to that. You can see my opponent got down the field and he scored on me here. But playing defense is all about learning your opponent's tendencies and adjusting. My next tip is set up your big plays with little plays. Little plays like this, a little inside handoff. It's not gonna show up much in the box score, but the idea of doing these small plays is to set up the big plays. Think of it like a boxer. Boxers don't just come out there and throw wild haymakers the entire fight. They set up their punches with jabs. They set up their uh, punches with fakes. They set up their big shots with little shots. And eventually uh, you can set your opponent up for big plays like this. I mean, I ran that ball right there. You can see on the very next play, he comes out as the defensive tackle and tries to stop a run play. But in reality, I'm just hitting him with a cover four bomb over the top. So if I didn't set up that play, he probably would have used it that. And that goes back to being predictable. You don't want to be predictable by doing the same thing over and over. You really have to mix it up on offense the same way you mix it up on defense. My next tip is take what the defense gives you. He's running a lot of cover fours. He's running a lot of defenses where the cornerbacks play back. I know that pre-snap, and I know that I could easily take a lot of underneath stuff to basically make him suffer for these type of defenses. But ultimately, you always just want to take the small stuff because you can see right here, small plays like this, layups like this can easily uh, result in points. So I'm just basically taking a little five yard out, turning it up though, I'm getting about 15 or more yards uh, on a very simple out route. So don't force it in the coverage. Take what the defense gives you. It's as simple as that. It's an NFL adage. It's been that way for years for a reason. And it's the same way in Madden. You can see right here, he's not respecting the run. He's more concerned with the pass. I'm going to switch over and hit him with an inside zone. It's going to be a very easy touchdown. There's also a Tampa 2, which ultimately plays the run a lot worse than cover 4. And a lot of coverages, basically. It's one of the worst inside zone run defenses in the game. Knowledge of this game is something that's very important as well. Uh, it's something that I can't really go over too much in detail in one single video. But basically, knowing what coverages do on defenses what the strengths and what the weaknesses are of individual zone coverages and man coverages and stuff like that is something that can make this game very easily but ultimately that's a much longer video and I can't go over that all in today's vid. I will try to leave a link in the description for a video that I did go over that in. If you guys want to check that out uh, I'll have a link in the description below. So back on defense, we're just going to put together all the things that we learned from the first drive. I was saying how he was hitting his tight end over the middle. On the very next play, you can see I user that tight end. He has to throw the ball away. Nope. That's very basic. It's a very simple thing that I learned from the first series. That he's very tight end dependent. He has a very good tight end uh, in uh, Kyle Pitts, which is one of the fastest in the entire game. So I'm going to user that and take that away. On the very next play, he has to switch up his uh, you know mentality entirely. Still goes right over the middle because he had an opening in the zone, uh, which is something that he's basically a attacking me at this point. Anytime that I try to set up this blitz, he's basically just trying to go where I'm not. And he's putting a lot of pressure on the user, which is something that you can do, but eventually it's going to catch up to you. On the very next play, you can see, can't cover all the crossing routes. Uh, this is something where eventually I'm going to have to just get out of this blitzing defense entirely and just go to something a little bit more zone-based, a little bit more zone-heavy, which once again, is all about learning and adjusting. On the next play, you can see we're basically shutting the run play down because anytime I see he comes out a two tight end set, I just imagine he's going to run. Pretty much anytime he comes out a two tight end set or more, it's pretty obvious that he's pretty much going to become a runner, which is something that you can say about most people. The more receivers are on the field, the more likely they are to pass. The more tight ends and fullbacks are on the field, the more likely they are to run. It's really that simple. On the very next play, you can see we get a very big sack pushing my opponent back to third and 20. On the last tip that I'm gonna go over, it's really important to play the situation. This is a play right here where typically I'd bring everybody up, but since he needs so many yards, basically just leave everybody back, and you can see he's throwing into a crowd Got for a very easy interception because he thought that that very same cover two was gonna be there based on the fact that he was having that win so often in the game. And then you can see, apparently, you know, he thinks the game's already lost down a touchdown with me having ball two minutes left to go. I mean, I probably would've scored, I probably would've been game over anyway, and this guy's gonna and roll out. I'm out of here. 
So that's it. That's the video. Like I said, as always, if you guys want to see more gameplay tip videos like this, hit the like button and let me know in the comment section. Other than that, thanks for watching. Man, my shit out. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like eBooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my vids and more. Link in the description below. Thank you.